Hey, what's up fellow gamers? It's BC here from Alloy7 and thank you for tuning in to level one of Gamer Life. As you can see, we're not at Legion 7 headquarters. We're out here man on the street style bringing you this show. But what is Gamer Life really all about? Well, from where I stand, it's an opportunity for all of us to share our lives and tell our stories as gamers with the purpose being one, to get to know each other better, thus fostering a mutual respect for one another, thus fostering an outstanding community centered around this thing we love called gaming. Obviously, as a vlog, everything I'm gonna talk about won't necessarily be gaming related, but it will be related to the life of a gamer, and I hope that you all will come on this ride with me. So before we jump headlong into today's topic, which is going to be my history as a video game player, I wanna lay some expectations for this video and also the videos that will follow. This is gonna broadcast every week on Wednesday, and what I'd like all of you to do is not just leave me comments in the comment section about how you relate or telling your story, but for those of you that have the ability, send me video responses, whether it be on a YouTube channel or your Facebook pages, whatever the case may be, send me a video response to the video videos we make here telling your story related to the topic of the day. I think that's an excellent way for us all to connect and it's really a great way for me to be able to showcase what you're doing, especially if you're a video creator like us here at Alloy 7. Now, going into my history as a gamer, you have to go all the way back to 1983 when I was barely walking or speaking English, but I had a brother, and I still have a brother, mind you, that's 10 years older than me that had an Atari 2600 who introduced me to games like uh, Missile Command, and Defender, but most importantly, Adventure. Adventure would be the game that set me on the trajectory that made me the gamer that I am today. Fast forward to about 1986, we come into the Commodore 64 and a lovely title called Bruce Lee, one of my favorite, if not the favorite, platform games of all time. From there, we fast forward just a little bit to around 1988, 1989, where I first got my hands on a Nintendo Entertainment System. Yes, I was very late to the party, but I got introduced to such great games, obviously, as Super Mario Brothers, but more importantly for me, Metroid and Metal Gear were the games that solidified me as a person who wanted to enjoy this hobby for the rest of my life. We then moved into the Super Nintendo era, somewhere around circa 1991, with games like Super Mario World, which is just absolutely fantastic. But more importantly for me, Final Fantasy II came out somewhere around 1993 and hooked me as a fan of role-playing games. Obviously not the first role-playing game I had ever played, as I had played Zork on the Commodore 64 and I had played Dragon Warrior on the NES. But Final Fantasy II was the game that would see to it that I would be a role-playing game all the way into today in 2015. From there, we fast forward just a little bit more into the 1995, 96, 97 era, where you have the PlayStation 1, and in my case, the Nintendo 64. Two systems that I was never very fond of until much later in my life coming into the 2000s. This period for me was what I call my gaming dark age where gaming just wasn't inspiring to me. Like I hated Final Fantasy VII the first time I played it. I felt like Metal Gear Solid diverted a little bit too much from the original, focused too much on the stealth and not enough on the action and the exploration. And all kinds of things like that played out to make me not really like that era. And the 3D transition from 2D to 3D really wasn't very pleasant. I mean, you had Super Mario 64, which I think did a good job. You had GoldenEye and you had Perfect Dark on the 64, but outside of those games, some of which I didn't even own myself, I really didn't have something connecting me hardcore to being a gamer. And that was until the year 2000, when I got my hands on a Sega Dreamcast and one lovely game called Shenmue. But strangely, it was a game that I loved and hated equally. You see, I hated Shenmue as a game because the controls and the mechanics sucked but I love the environment and the ability to explore an open world, much like what you're seeing here, and the ability to solve mysteries and have an adventure. It was just excellent with the voice acting, the music, and all the ambience that made that game what it was. That fast forwards us to about 2001 when I first got a PlayStation 2, and much like my time with the PlayStation 1, my PlayStation 2 play was uninspired. I didn't find games that I loved. And that fast forwards to around 2003, 2004, where I finally got a GameCube, but had a very similar experience to what I had had on PlayStation 1, 
Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 2. Then we hit around 2005 where I both get an Xbox and get exposed to Elder Scrolls Morrowind, which today is still one of my favorite games. But I also use that time to go back and play some of the games I missed during the PlayStation 1 era. Games like Star Ocean The Second Story, games like Suikoden and Suikoden 2. Games that to this day are some of my favorite, not only RPGs, but all time games. I had missed them during my whole rant and raving during what I call the Dark Ages, but now there was this kind of renaissance of gaming for me, this resurgence. But I still didn't have a lot of love for the Xbox, even though I thought Halo 2 was great, or the PlayStation 2 until 2006, when Final Fantasy 12 entered my home and finally brought me back to that level of gaming, of just love that I had had back in the days that I hadn't been able to recapture for a lot of years. They finally found a way to develop an RPG that stripped out all of the tedium of combat and just focused on the parts that were fun, at least from my perspective. And then from there, same year, we jump into the Xbox 360, which I give credit for fully bringing me back into the world of being a full-time gamer. Xbox 360 had games like Tales of Vesperia. It had Elder Scrolls Oblivion, which was the reason why I bought an Xbox 360 in the first place. And that game is what solidified me as an open world RPG lover. Then I got introduced to Two Worlds. And as much as people hated that game on Xbox 360, and yes, I admit it's better on PC, I love that game with all of my heart. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Definitely one of my all time, if not my all time favorite RPG. And it's just games like that that really brought me back into the fold. And when you top that off with the fact that Xbox 360 incorporated achievements to an obsessive person like me who will obsess over getting every achievement. Now, not only are my games fun, but even the tedious games are fun to play because I have a purpose for playing them that outstretches some of the tedious and boring parts of the game. And then we fast forward into 2013 where I finally get a PC strong enough to play modern games well. And not that I didn't have a PC back in the day, but it could barely run the old school Morrowind games. Now I'm able to play newer and more modern games, some of which don't exist on console, in a way that I couldn't before. And even though I don't really have a platform defining game for the PC yet, it's still where I see myself very much in the future playing games, I also was able to pick up a PlayStation 4 during that era, and again, that doesn't yet have a console defining uh, game for me, but I also used that time to go back and pick up a PlayStation 3 from a friend of mine who lent me his, and I got to play a game called The Last of Us, and I'm in this weird space where I'm almost ready to consider The Last of Us my favorite game of all time, but I feel like I've got to go back and play some older games, which I have been doing, and I've got to give time, time. i got to let it marinate a little bit before I can come out and say, yes, this is my top game of all time. But neither here nor there, it's definitely a life-changing, experience-changing game for me as a gamer, something that, again, like Shenmue and Oblivion and Two Worlds did before, it solidified my place in the gaming community. It makes me want to game for what I can see as the foreseeable future in my life. And I think that's enough out of me, friends. Like I said, I don't know exactly what the future holds, but I do expect that I'm gonna be a gamer when it gets here. Very optimistic about what's gonna happen with PC and the PlayStation 4. Will I eventually get an Xbox One? Remains to be seen if they'll create a game that's a platform selling game for me. But again, it's not all about me. It's about us and the collective story. I want to hear your history as a gamer. Tell me where you started. Tell me what carried you to where we are today. And if you can, send it to me via video. Obviously, comments are always welcome. Emails, I know some of you email me. That's always welcome. Hit me up on Google+, Plus, wherever you want to find me, that's cool. But for those of you that have the means, definitely send a video response. And as much as I can, I'll find ways to incorporate your video responses into future episodes and also give shout outs to your channels so that you can get some publicity. And with that said, my friends, allow me to thank you for joining us for level one of Gamer life. It's in the books. Uh, until next time, until all the one, it's BC, the Brain Supreme here at Alloy 7 with a very cold camera woman signing off. Allow me to tell all of you peace and Godspeed.